Hey everyone, it's Belinda Fremo from Passionate Project Management and wanted to come to you today on Facebook Live to talk about some of the updates that are happening with the new version of the PMBOK Guide. So if you are a project manager, you know, looking at certification or recertification or adding certifications, you may be familiar with the fact that every few years, three to four years, PMI puts out a new PMBOK Guide. So we're currently on PMBOK Guide 5th edition and we are heading towards PMBOK Guide 6th edition. So 6 is going to be released in September. They haven't given us an exact date yet in September. And then they're going to start impacting the exams in Q1 of 2018. So in the first quarter of 2018, those exams are going to change. Again, we don't have a nail down date yet, which is kind of typical. Last time there was an update, they, they had a date, PMI had a date and then they end up having to move it out. So they're kind of leaving it a little bit more open now just to give themselves a little bit of room there to make sure everything gets in, the testing systems get updated and everything. So we've been busy here at Passionate Project Management working on getting the updates, really evaluating and analyzing what's changing, what's not changing, and how is that gonna impact our students and our clients who self-study. So a couple of interesting things that I like to bring up, and actually one of them I find really, really fascinating, and I, I'm kind of jazzed about it, honestly. Um, if you're familiar at all with the PMBOK Guide, if you have taken your PMP, if you have studied for any of these exams, you may be familiar with the fact that there were 47 processes in PMBOK Guide 5th edition, and for each process, there is a list of inputs, tools, techniques, and outputs for right? every process. I call those the, the ittos, right? Everybody hates ittos. Everybody hates ittos. And one thing is people get really, really stressed because there's literally hundreds of them that people are trying to memorize to get ready for their exam. And one thing we've always said as a training provider is for the PMP exam especially, it's not about memorizing a list of ittos. It's about really understanding what these processes are, how they relate, and what does that mean in a practical situation. A lot of the questions that you get on the PMP exam are scenario-based questions. So if you have a list of ittos memorized, that's not gonna help you work through a scenario question. And that's where we're, I think, very different from a lot of the training providers out there, a lot of the advice out there. Just memorize the ittos, just read the PMBOK, you'll be fine. Um, so in fifth edition, we saw lots and lots and lots of ittos, right? Well, here's the big exciting change for sixth edition. The list of ittos have gone from being very specific to now being more generic. And what I mean by that is in the past, fifth edition, we would see, for example, a list of inputs being activity attributes, activity list, milestone list, risk register, stakeholder register, you know, they call all these things out separately. Now in sixth edition, they just call them project documents. Ah, all right, tools and techniques, same thing. We would go through variance analysis, trend analysis, earn value analysis, uh, you know, ways to collect requirements, you know, group creativity techniques, group decision-making techniques, uh, facilitated workshops, focus groups, brainstorming, on and on and on and on. In the new edition of the PMBOK Guide, they just kind of bucket all that stuff into data analysis, data gathering, data representation. So they really streamlined that. So it's gonna be a very interesting dynamic and a very interesting change as we move into this new testing window because again, the focus isn't gonna be on here's all these idos you need to know because now they're generic. So you know data analysis, you have to understand what does data, data analysis mean in all of the different processes. So it's a huge change. Um, and I'm, like I say, I'm excited about it because this is something we've been saying for years. If you truly wanna be an exceptional project manager, if you truly want to do well on this test, understand the pieces. Don't just, don't just memorize the list. So now the hand's being forced, you really have to understand the pieces. So I'm excited about that. Um, kind of other, other key things going on with PMBOK Guide 6 edition, they had 47 processes in 5th. We're going up to 49 in 6th edition. So we're adding three and taking away one. Um, managing uh, project knowledge is gonna be added, which is that's your work performance data, work performance information, work performance reports, that sequence we've talked about a lot. Implementing risk responses, yay, that's something I've been saying for a long time, so leave it to me to get excited about a new process, but it's like, yes, that needs to be an executing process, so it's in there. Um, and then controlling our resources. Uh, one of the knowledge areas has also changed. So it used to be human resource management, it's now just resource management. 
um, and they got rid of the closed procurements process. So that's kind of the net net at the, at the macro level of the 47 processes, again, going to 49, adding three, taking away one. And then the other really, I guess, two significant changes I see from a content perspective within the PMBOK guide, when you're bringing in a lot more agile approaches, agile techniques, references to agile. So it's not you know, an agile book of knowledge by any, by any means. It's not a, you know, detailed on how do you do agile projects, but there certainly is a lot of cross-reference now, which is a great acknowledgement that for a lot of organizations, they're using not only traditional or, you know, waterfall project management or um, even iterative project management, they're dabbling, if not fully integrated into agile approaches. So there's a lot of reference to that. And then there's also a lot of reference to um, emotional intelligence, the leadership and management skills of a project manager. Again, really seeing that evolution of a PM moving from being a task manager to actually being a, a leader, a thought leader, a manager, you know, somebody who has kind of that higher level strategic view. And so we really see that big emphasis on that. So that's really exciting. So all in all, I have to give the Pinbot Guide 6 edition two thumbs up. Um, impressed with the changes. They took a ton of feedback in. Um, you can tell that they incorporated it. So it'll be exciting. And again, I'm using a test preview version right now that we get as a registered education provider. It's gonna be launched to the market in September. Now, a couple little add-on pieces here. If you are preparing for your exam, you wanna sit for your PMP, you wanna sit for your CAPM, your RMP, your risk management, um, your scheduling professional, all of those that leverage the PMBOK guide. Number one, know your window. So if you've been studying fifth edition, your clock's ticking, all right? You wanna get in. Now this happens every time that there's a change that there's this mad rush to get in and take your exam. Everybody wants to get it done before there's an exam change with, with good reason. I, I totally understand that. So if you are studying on fifth edition, get going, get your butt in gear, get your date on the calendar and don't make your date like, oh, December 31st. Cause we don't know when in Q1 they're gonna change. And I know those test seats at the Prometric locations are going to fill up, right? So don't just, oh, I'll just put it off and I'll book it at the end of the year. I would say, I would push for probably in October, maybe November type timeline for that um, at, the, at the latest, kind of putting yourself out there. And that's plenty of time to study and prepare. So that's the one thing I would say. Um, the other thing that I would say is if you are looking um, longer term, you know, maybe moving into that sixth edition, uh, always take into consideration the process that training providers go through to develop the materials. Because remember, the exam is based on the PMBOK guide and other relevant sources. There's a little bit of a discovery period that happens after we start getting students in. And again, this is where passionate project management's a little bit different than what I see a lot of the other providers doing, especially of like self-study books and stuff, is that we always keep a temperature gauge on our students. We always wanna find out how well they're performing on the exam. Obviously, the biggest test, did they pass? And did they pass the first time? Um, and hopefully with high scores, right? Um, we, we keep a real close eye on that, especially after an exam change. So for example, we're gonna be releasing our materials October 1st that align with the sixth edition, but we know very soon after, probably within probably late Q1, as soon as we start having some of our students test and give us feedback, we are open to doing an, a, a revised release. The, Base will stay the same because it's all the same ITOs, same processes and everything. But if there's any flavors, nuances or whatever that we're hearing, we want to make sure we incorporate that. So that would be one recommendation is that whoever you do use as a provider um, or if you're self-studying, make sure it's an organization that doesn't just put out a release, like for example, October 2017 for Pinbot Guide 6 edition, and then they don't touch it again till the next change um, because you really want to be getting that pulse. Again, Pinbot Guide and other relevant sources. So. We don't know what those other relevant sources are, so that's why we really leverage our students. And kudos to our students. They are awesome about paying it forward. Um, they love to give feedback, nothing within or outside ethical boundaries, of course. They don't tell specific questions, um, but being able to be well-prepared is just such a huge benefit and asset when you are taking one of these very nerve-wracking exams. So if you are interested in studying, if you have any questions, um, we do have our new study group with me um, on Facebook, both for the PMP CAPM, and there's gonna be one coming for the RMP as well. Um, I'm kind of a Facebook junkie, so I love it. I can interact with you guys. If you have questions, if you're struggling with a concept, 
Um, I love to have that group together and learning. So we've got that going. We're open to suggestions on things you'd like to see on that as well. So join our Facebook groups. Um, also check out our site. We've got the application assistance spreadsheet out there. If you're working on your PMP application, that can streamline it. We also just published our PMP quick start guide that walks you through the entire application process, what you need to know about that, the timelines and everything, all those tips. We have our flashcards out there on Amazon, both hard copy and Kindle. And there is a lot of really, really cool stuff that's being launched on 10.1 for 6th edition. I'm not going to like ruin the secrets right now. I got to keep you guys excited and anticipated, but we've got some really, really good stuff coming, including our study guide. So excited. So that's it for me, Belinda Fremo. Again, any questions you have, I'm happy to answer those. So please um, respond to this video. You can put your comments or questions on there and I'm happy to answer. Again, look, look for you in those study groups. Um, best of luck. There'll be more updates coming as we dig in a little bit further on the Pinbot Guide 6 edition. Everybody have a great day. Have a great weekend.